Hi everyone, I'm Julian, one of the co-authors of Your TTS, toward Zero Shot Multi-Speaker TTS and Zero Shot Voice Conversion for Everyone. That's quite a mouthful, and we'll go over those terms and explain what it means. So first of all, uh, why is it called Your TTS? Well, it's because to train a Zero Shot Multi-Speaker TTS model, you need a dataset with a huge number of speakers, and that limits the languages where it's possible to English, Chinese, and maybe a few more. Our approach aims to train a multilingual model so as to take advantage of the high speaker count of English in languages where you only have a few speakers like French or where you only have a single speaker like Portuguese. What is a multi-speaker TTS model? So like a regular TTS model, you input text and you get the audio version of it out. The difference here is that instead of being limited to only one voice, you can synthesize the same text in multiple different voices by providing the associated speaker ID. During training, the model associates the voices it learns to synthesize with their respective speaker's IDs. And here's what it sounds like when you fit the same sentence in the model for two different speakers. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, that act as a prism and form a rainbow. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. So let's move on to multilingual models. Uh, following the same principles, multilingual synthesis is learned by providing in training multiple languages to the model with their associated language IDs. Here's how a single speaker sounds uh, in two different languages. Here it's English and French. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. Lorsque la lumière du soleil frappe les gouttes de pluie dans l'air, celles-ci agissent comme un prisme et forment un arc-en-ciel. So now let's take a look at zero shot learning. In this scenario, uh, the model has not seen the voice in its training set, but we're still asking it to produce similar sounding voice. To manage that, we train the model on a dataset with many speakers and we replace the speaker ID with the output of a model train on a speaker verification task. That way, we have a vector representation of the speaker identity, and the TTS model only has to correlate that with the voices it gets in the dataset. Listen to the model trying to clone my voice from this French reference sample. La liste des réglementations européennes en la matière est longue. Lorsque la lumière du soleil frappe les gouttes de pluie dans l'air, celles-ci agissent comme un prisme et forment un arc-en-ciel. One cool perk of that method is that uh, the representation we get from the speaker verification model is only weakly correlated with the language ID. So we can provide a reference in French and have the model generate English. The list of European regulation in that domain is long. So zero shot learning is cool because it's very fast, but sometimes it can be hit or miss. Some recording conditions or voices can be a challenge for the model. For an even closer result, we can fine-tune the model on less than a minute of data from a new speaker. Here's what the improvement sounds like um, on the voice of Christopher Shubley, one of the co-authors of the paper. To make a revolution every day is the nature of the sun. I'm very glad to introduce the text-to-speech system that we made. I'm very glad to introduce the text-to-speech system that we made. To make a revolution every day. I'm very glad to introduce the text-to-speech system that we made. One last thing that your teachers can do, thanks to its bits-based architecture, is voice conversion. For that task, we only use the last part of the model, we feed a driving audio for the content, a reference audio for the speaker identity, and we get out uh, the driving audio converted with the speaker identity of the reference. Please call Stella. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. As you can see, we get audio that is a little bit wobbly in tone, but voice conversion is a hard task when you don't explicitly train a model for it, and especially from a male voice to a female voice, and conversely. Now, let's take a closer look at the architecture. 
Like I said before, YourTGS is largely based on fits, which means it's an end-to-end model. That means that you input text and audio waveforms comes out. It also means that the DTS and vocoder models are trained conjointly. Let's look at inference first. In the beginning, we compute the speaker embedding from the reference audio thanks to the speaker encoder to be then able to condition our model on it. Then, we concatenate the language embedding to every character, allowing us later to do code switching. That means being able to set the language ID independently for every word, like in a sentence, I have a feeling of déjà vu. The sentence is in English, but two of the words are pronounced like in French. Those embeddings are then encoded by a transformer into a sequence of pseudophonemes. The stochastic duration predictor predicts the duration for each pseudophoneme, and then the flow decoder and the vocoder transform that representation into audio. To allow the model to generalize better to new speakers, we don't condition the text encoder on the speaker embeddings. None of the steps of inference are autoregressive. That means that inference is very fast and that inference time doesn't grow that much with the length of the sentence. At training time, we feed the linear spectrogram of a dataset sample to a posterior encoder, whose role is to generate a shared audio representation that we call latent variable C for the rest of the model to learn from. Then the flow-based decoder transforms Z into ZP. On the other side, the text encoder has computed the pseudophonies that should match with CP minus the alignment. Here, we use an algorithm called MAS to find the best possible alignment between ZP and the pseudophonemes. That alignment constitute the training data for the duration predictor to learn from. One experiment that we do in your TGS that is not represented here is SCL, speaker consistency loss. As the name implies, we use the speaker encoder to measure how close the generated voice and the reference voice are in training, nudging the model toward better similarity. So all that sounds great, uh, but where can your TTS improve? Um, the first point is enunciation. Especially in Portuguese, uh, we have sometimes pronunciation errors, and that is mainly due to the fact that we are using characters as input instead of using phonemes. Um, and this is a deliberate choice of ours because that allows us to use YOLTGS in languages where no phonemizer is available. Then there is accent suppressing. Um, so in ZeroShot, we rarely encounter any problem, but for voices that are in the training set, we observe a small accent when making a voice speak in, in, in another language. Also, uh, we can observe that for long sentences, Sometimes we have a bit of a monotonic tone and it can sound a little flat. Um, we also observe a natural speech for some speaker language combination. And we still have some audio artifacts. So this leaves a lot to improve and we have plenty of ideas on how to improve your TGS. So this is a work in progress. So how can you try your TGS? It's really simple using cookie TTS CLI. Um, you just make sure that you have the latest version of cookie TTS installed. Um, you can do pipe install TTS. Then uh, with using the TTS command, you can specify the text. You can specify the language with language ID and the reference file for the speaker embedding uh, using speaker wave. And it should sound like this. this is a text-to-speech system speaking with my voice. To go further, you can read the Cookie AI blog post that we wrote together with uh, Aaron and Anderson. You can read the paper to go further, and you can try the collab demo for TTS and voice conversion. Um, all of the links will be in the description. And uh, we'd like to thank our partners that uh, worked with us uh, for this project. And you can check out their websites in the description as well. Finally, we'd like to thank you for your interest. If you have any questions, feel free to open a discussion on Koki TTS repository on GitHub. You can also join our community on Gitter. You can also subscribe to the Koki newsletter to stay up to date on what Koki is up to. And that's all for me for now. And have a nice day.